out and be like, but don't talk it all That's really not the truth, I just don't fuck with y'all I'm only with a few and yeah, my circle small Or either by my Danny Ruger in my drawers Ain't trying to be no tough guy, it's just time race The softest niggas gangster in the mid state My grandma said you lose, you better fight it What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing out there? Um, we got a very, very, very special show uh, tonight. I am with uh, the beautiful toy, the ATL vegan. Um, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome up, to though? Conversation with a Boss. How are you doing tonight? I'm great. How about you? And I cannot complain, man. I am blessed, man. Uh we gonna have a good show tonight. We got we got a great topic. Uh, I'm excited. We got, we got a couple things that I need to discuss uh, before we get to the tonight's topic. Um, I like to do current events, so we're gonna first start off with uh, one thing that I know we both have a love for is basketball. Absolutely. So the season has just started. Yes. Uh, we got you know we got my team, the Warriors. You know they <laughs> they smoking hot right now. Uh, we we got a lot of different storylines. We got Dame with the Bucks. Um, Absolutely. We also got LeBron in his twenty first season. Absolutely. And and you from the ATL, you got your Hawks. Yeah. Yes. So but I love LeBron. Feeling? I love LeBron too, though. So so how you feeling about this NBA season off top? The Hawks are looking decent. Uh, I was watching a little bit of them tonight play the Washington Wizards, and uh, the score was. 111.89. Last I saw, okay. uh, so they were they were looking pretty good. Um, LeBron and the Lakers they look pretty decent. Will they make it out of the first round? I don't okay. know. What I want to ask you is, what kind of effect will James Harden um, and Russell Westbrook have with the Clippers? Oh, what? Will look, it make if, a if, significant difference? Is everybody healthy? Is the question. If That's everybody's healthy, it's gonna be something nasty. But is Kawhi even playing right now? I don't even think Kawhi is even playing right now. Matter of fact, when was the last time Kawhi even played? Let's be real. I did see him play the end of last year. So my question is, what happened over the summer where he's not playing right now? Maybe he was injured practicing. I don't know with his workouts. I don't know. If somebody somebody needs to get with LeBron, LeBron has had one serious growing injury in the 21 years. Other than that, he's been relatively healthy. And and if everybody is healthy, the Clippers are something to 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 deal with. I think if the Clippers are healthy, they are the best team to give um uh Denver a run for their money. I think in the West, in the West wise. It's a lot of power in the West, though. I know. It's a lot but, of power in the West. But if somehow you can get, first of all, if you can get Harden to play like vintage Harden. Well, something. What is he, 34? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's hard for him to play like vintage Harden. But, so all, all I need is some, all I need is production on the office end. You give me production on the end, you're okay. Really? If he can get you 18 to 20? And Russ can do, yeah. And Russ can do his thing with maybe twelve or fifteen. They solid. Yeah. So, but this is the crazy part. Do you think that James Harden destroys the team when he comes in? I don't think so. I think he wanted to leave Philly so bad that I think, um, I think he's probably going to try to make it work. I, I, I I'm just going to love sitting back watching it. I'm telling you, I got my popcorn ready. Oh. I mean, I think every season the NBA gives you some uh, type of drama and it, it makes you just interested in the, the actual the storylines of the NBA, more or less for the, the games that you watch. Because the games you watch, you know it's going to be some great athletes. But when you get that extra... Like when KD went to the Warriors, that was an extra storyline. Right. When he had to go back and right. see Russ. Right. And they had all the what cupcake about teams. Extra storyline. So... Look forward to what that. about this? What about this new play-in thing that they have mid-season? What What do you think about that? I'm trying to figure out the actual logistics. Like I wanted to I ask it was you about it. What it was? I don't know. I, I guess I, 
Yeah, I have to see. I have to see what that's about. See, if, see, if, see if that makes a difference. They they say it's just like regular season games, except it yeah. just puts you in like a better standing towards the end of the season. So I guess I'll just have to, I'll just have to see about that. See how I see how I like it. And that's the thing. Like I think that for the most part, um, it's trying to get the athletes to play a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, I think it's like a five hundred thousand dollar bonus for the uh for the team that wins. Oh, that sounds um, good. I don't know, but is it is it something that's pushing you if you make thirty eight million a year? No. So so it's kind of, you know, I don't know. We'll see. And then is also, it bragging rights? I don't know. I think nowadays um, it's important to these athletes to preserve their bodies. So I don't think that this is going to be enough to keep them from sitting out the way they do. Um, so what is the um, I can't Adams. Adam Silver. Yeah, Adam Silver was saying that they have uh, they had a collective meeting with the athletes. They were telling them if someone comes to the game, they want to see their favorite athlete, but you guys are sitting out. It just doesn't look good and it's not good for business. So hopefully th- this year that will be a little bit better. Um, yeah. Nobody wants to pay $100, $120, $25, 30, $30, and then the athlete is sitting on the bench. Nobody wants that. So. Nah, I mean, I'm from Michigan, so if I go see an athlete, I'm going to a Piston game, and if the Pistons is not good that year, they're going to sit their best player. Like, it's automatically. So you might be going out there to see the Warriors. Steph might be sitting, so you might get Chris Paul and, and the, the the fabulous uh, dramatics or somebody. Like, other than right. that, you're not getting – the uh the top name players. I remember when LeBron used to come, that would be the game LeBron sits. He would come, <laughs> you would pay all that money. LeBron, matter of fact, LeBron wouldn't even travel a couple times. Right. When he was with Cleveland, you'd be sitting there like, well, at least I get the oh, he ain't even on the sideline, bro. Like who who am I came to see? One Eric thing Snow? With, one thing with the Warriors though, you can always count on Draymond Green to get a fight with somebody. So it's a good fight. Oh, oh for Don't sure. That's play. hey, that's what we do. That's what we do in the sack. Hey. <laughs> Hey, what we hey we from the fight tonight? Hey, we losing? All right, I bet you this. I bet you ain't getting to that bus on time. I promise you that. But hey, man, this NBA season, man, is gonna be crazy. Um, and and I'm I'm here for it. I think honestly, I think that the um, I think Denver, man, they got the edge. They they definitely got the edge. They something to deal with. Denver looks good, but I must admit, um, your Warriors could probably give them a little trouble. If if they stay healthy, so we'll see. I'm looking the, for, I'm looking for them to make a trade. I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't be surprised if they traded Chris Paul somewhere in this during this season for a big man or an athletic big. I'm not even lying. Guess what? Because they do need one. I'm not even lying. You know what it reminds me of though. A lot of people kind of like dogging me with is when they got D'Angelo Russell um, from uh, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. When they got rid, uh, when KD went over there, mm-hmm. and then they got him back, they used it mm-hmm. as a trade piece. And then next thing you know, we got Andrew Wiggins next year. We got a championship. So I look forward to them actually getting rid of uh, CP3. I don't see him finishing that contract out in Golden State. I just don't. I think he only got one year on his contract anyway, though. I I really didn't understand what part he was gonna play there. Really, honestly, I, I I thought that was a piece of the puzzle that they could have left <laughs> wherever wherever he was. I, that was it, just me. It's it's one of them things that you'd be like, I get it in the long run because you want to get out of that money, but that Jordan Poole money, that's what it was. That that's Jordan Poole was. money, that contract. Okay. okay. It, and he couldn't get along with Dre. He was starting right. to riff with uh, right. Steph a little bit. It was a couple times in that playoffs when Steph tried to pull him to the side, talk to him. He brushed Steph off. You not brushing stuff off, not in Golden State, bro. He didn't he do that to go. Draymond. Oh, he he tried. He had to, <laughs> they had to wake him up. They had to get some uh, some salt. <laughs> hey, they had to work on his nose. Hey, hey, get up, bro. You went to sleep. Uh, Draymond but, be doing too much. Okay, but we we live, we learn, and yes. we move forward. That's all yes. we can do. Yes. So, hey, tonight let's get to the uh let's get to the bread and butter the, the get meat to and potatoes let's get to it tonight we are going to talk about what is dating looking like now this conversation started by uh earlier we was graced with this this um video of a, a young lady that was asked to go on a date 
she went on a date with a guy and the guy, I guess, pulls up to Cheesecake Factory. She says she's not eating at Cheesecake Factory. Next thing you know, across the internet went crazy. They started bashing the lady. Then some lady came out with a list of different things that women would not do or go on dates. Got me to thinking. So what does a date look like? Where are you supposed to go? How are you supposed to be treated? What is the expectations of a date? So, Toy. Yes. I had to get a female's perspective. Absolutely. In 2023, what does a date look like? I saw the list. Everything listed on the list was fine with me. I don't see the big deal, honestly. A date to me in 2023 looks like communication first. We're going to talk about right. each. Let's get to know each other. That's first and foremost. Then he is obviously going to want to see me if he likes me. Where we're going to me is not as important as us getting to know each other. Cheesecake right. Factory would have been fine with me. But so with bowling. So would they set a long drive? You can really get to know somebody on a long drive. They said um, it was so many good things on that list to me, but they said, no, it was about 20, 20 plus things. And they said, this is unacceptable. Red Lobster was unacceptable. Hey, I like endless shrimp. Wait, I'm vegan, <laughs> but Red Lobster is great. Like, I'm I not saying he's not. Okay, maybe on the second or the third date, if she if she wants to get, you know, a little more pickier or specific, but at least find out if you like each other. Right. Right. That's all I'm I, saying. I think the list was a troll. I think um, a lot of that stuff wasn't really like serious to be taken serious. I think it was kind of piggybacking off of what she said. I think what she said was for real um, and her reaction just turned on her. I think she was going to get a whole bunch of female in her mind, uh, going to get some females to be like, yeah, girl, you deserve more than cheesecake factory. And, <laughs> and thought it was going to be this big roar. She was going to get a bunch of likes and nah, not, nah, it, it totally did not turn out that way. Um, I don't well, know. It, can I ask weird. you a question? Sure. How would you have handled it? Interesting question. Nah, people that know me, they know I'm very direct. Okay. Um, and I personally would have would have treated her like a queen. I would have took her to Burger King. I would have got her a BK double, or I would have got her a Whopper Junior. I got her a large fry. I would have got her a high C orange because you know they got that new pop machine where you can get all the pops and different uh, flavors. I got her the high C orange, and if she didn't like it, I would have dropped her off. But or, that is after, but that's after if you try to take her to Cheesecake, the Cheesecake Factory. Factory. Exactly. Because she needs to be treated like a queen that she deserves to be, like she needed to be put on a pedestal that was high enough for her. So, but at the same time, I know I'm not going to see her no more. So if I piss her off on the way out, like it, it's, it's a highlight of my day, not her day. Would you talk to her? Would you say, what's wrong with the Cheesecake Factory? Um... Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's naturally like you're gonna ask. So you you don't like cheesecake factory? Like you don't like cheesecake? You don't like like what? Is it? A problem? But she didn't. She didn't get out the car. Nah, they pulled up to the building. She looked at the building. She was like, Nah, nah. Uh -uh. When did we? When did we get to this point where we're we're on a date? We're trying to get to know somebody. We're may, possibly trying to build with them. What is wrong? Okay, what about what if he had said, "Let's go get coffee at the Waffle House"? What's wrong with that? We're getting to know each other. We're getting to know each other. That is the to me that is maturity, and that speaks volumes about the woman that you are. If you are conversing with a male or whoever, whoever, if you're trying to get to know each other, I don't see a thing wrong with where y'all go, whether it's Starbucks. Or Starbucks is a good date for, you know, to me, you can get to know each other. You can have your coffee. You can go for a walk. It doesn't take money. Like money should be, maybe, maybe she wanted him to spend big on her on the first date. But my thing is, why, why would he do that? And let and, him, and, 
it's let him crazy step it because up. Because what? Where does he go from there? Where does he? Where? What does the second date look like? That's the thing. If he was really trying to impress her on that first date, what would he do for the second date or the third date or anniversary? Exactly. Exactly. The, the, the special dates. Um, I think you build up to that. So I think if you start on a solid foundation and just find out what she likes, like they don't even know each other enough for him not to know that she doesn't like Cheesecake Factory. That's my thing. Talk then, to him. Communicate with him. Now, I did see a follow-up video where um, she was explaining that, um, you know, it was just, it took her by surprise. And he was actually by her side on the second video. So, obviously, that date wasn't the end of them. They obviously went on other dates because they're still together right now. And But she had to do some type of campaign where she had to clear it up. That's just point blank period. She had to clear it up. <laughs> now, he's a stronger man than I could ever be. Because at that point in time, she told me who she was. Now, I get it. Some women deserve more than others. That's cool. Some men, just, you know, they, they need more. And that's understandable. That. But to disrespect me, because the disrespect came when she pulled out her phone and recorded this. It wasn't a conversation between him and her, and it got out, and somebody came and told the story. Right. It was the fact that she pulled the phone out and read live. Or right. she recorded it. She put it on Snapchat. Whatever she did. Right. So it to get out into the world. So people that didn't know this man that might bump into him, like, oh my good, you with the Cheesecake Factory guy. Come on now, man. We we got to do better. Man, we got to no do coming, better than that. As, as there's no coming back from that. There's no coming back from that. Now she probably feels like he, he she can disrespect him. Um, to me, respect is huge and it should be boundaries have to be set. And then the men have to stick to the boundaries. I know these days a lot has changed with dating, but as, as the, as the lead, the man is supposed to lead. Um, even, even if the relationship is new, he's supposed to lead, let him make the decision as to where you guys are going. To me, it's just not a big deal. And if she acts inappropriately, he's going to have to check her. He really really she doesn't deserve burger king she should be driven home and not mm. called let her know that it's not okay it's not okay for you to act that way i even go one further i'm gonna call you the uber i'm gonna call you that uber no i'm no, gonna go no. inside the cheesecake factory i ain't waste my gas <laughs> now see I'm, I'm from i'm from a city where it's kind of small so going from here to say the cheesecake factory might might not take that long but if i'm in say your city, Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I'm going from say Stone Mountain to somewhere way over there. Right. That's nice, and, and in traffic, seventy, I seventy five traffic at that. No, that's gas money. Nope. I'm calling you Uber. Uber can take you to the crib. I'm going in to get me a sandwich. How about this? How about this? How many other women could be bidding for his attention? True. True. If he's a decent, and he, to me, I saw the video, he seems like a very decent guy. Most men that I know would, you know, it would have went left <laughs> quick. And he don't, he don't probably value himself high enough to think that maybe she was probably the top. Maybe he think that she was the best that he can get. So how about this? How about we, when we enter into these uh, courtships, relationships, be more selective about the people. I think before we even get to the point where we go out, let's get to know each other to the point where she knows not to be disrespectful. You have to, you have to set these boundaries and you have to stick to them. We can't just, because she looks good, I, I can't even say, you know, she was just, you know, I, I just think it was very inappropriate of her, period. It, it wasn't cute. Yeah. All right. So my question is, if he spends a thousand dollars, is he wrong for expecting sex after <laughs> the date? Just my thoughts. Just my thoughts. Absolutely not. Mm. On a first date, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. Now, I'm not putting a price on the woman. 
but everybody knows that a thousand dollars is not the average price that you spend on a first date. True. It's especially if he's trying to if he's trying to impress her, and well, he's got, both of them are automatically going to know about the vibe. But see, that's the thing that you can't deny. If they're vibing and everything is cool, then she would have went in a cheesecake factory with them, and then everything would have been cool. I have no problem with her going in Cheesecake Factory, them vibing and whatever goes down on the first night. It's cool. I know people who got down on the first night and are still together years later. Yeah, but if, if this is it, the first date and thousand dollars, I think probably he's thinking something's going to go down. I, I think. I think it depends on the, the type of guy, like if it's a guy where he's trying to impress her. He probably he would like for it to go down, but I don't think he's expecting. It. If he's Can like an NBA player just trying to flash his money to get her to draw her in, something different. So can I ask you, what kind of regular guy would have a thousand dollars to spend on a first date? Celebrity. Celebrity would celebrity would never go for her saying no to the Cheesecake Factory. True. That is true. It wouldn't it wouldn't happen? Um, let's see. I don't know. I don't see a drug dealer spending a thousand dollars without thinking about sex. Me personally. You're right. Absolutely. Hate to put that stigma on you, but I don't <laughs> I don't see that. I don't absolutely. see it happening. And if she hangs around in that environment, she already knows the deal. So she's probably not surprised. So so I I don't know. I think she shoots herself in the foot uh for the long run because once you put that video on. The next person that runs across you is already thinking, yo, right. I don't think I want to deal with this headache. Right. So I hope it works out. I hope it works out for them. I, just, I don't know how it's going to. But, but like I said, there's a lot of men out there that look for that 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 type of uh, a woman. And they like that kind of abuse. Um, so it probably will work out for her. I don't know about him. As long as he might be just happy she's in the picture. From a man's perspective, just your thoughts. Are women, because of their independence, too aggressive modern day? Too aggressive. No, no. I think um I think they're just right. I think men are too soft. <laughs> I think I think men are soft as shit nowadays. I mean, all right, so you got two types of men. What okay. you're gonna have? You're gonna have a real soft man, or you're gonna have these these so-called high value men that think the the world belongs at their feet. You don't have that middle of the road. I know my lane, man. That's the problem. So I, I look at the women are just picking up. Um, they picking up where we kind of like slacking. Like, uh, they are the new men. The men are the new women. I know more men that want to get in long. Uh, long lasting relationships and want to take walks, then I know women that want to get in those long lasting relationships and want to take walks in the park or whatever the case may be. So, um, no, nah, I think the women women are just doing what, what you know, what they supposed to do. Now, the men, man, it, it ain't it ain't what I'm used to seeing growing up. I would say it ain't it ain't Uncle Buddy and uh, Paw Paw. Definitely. Okay. Ain't so let me give you my perspective, my perspective. Now, this is just my thoughts. Again, I think women are too aggressive and I think they display too much um, aggression, especially in relationships. Um, I think because we are so independent. Um, OK, I think we need to get back to being very feminine because it's very attractive for women to be feminine. But I also think it's very attractive for men to be very masculine and that's what we're missing. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, when the women became aggressive, it's kind of like the men fell back and that's not, please take charge. We love that. It's, we love that. A lot of them is, is um, I can't even tell you where it started. I can't tell you when a man said, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and play the back seat. And <laughs> I'm gonna let this woman control everything. Like I know men, that are like that, but they're usually like that because that's what they see. Their mother was the strong one in the uh, the family, 
And oh yeah, for sure. Either pops was there or wasn't there. Even he was there. He played the back seat, so the kid and then growed up, and that's my position. That's what I was supposed to do. He learned that, or, or, hey, it's just some some switch went on, and and hey, we finna go. Hey, y'all are our bitch, and the man was like, "Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, I, yes, we are." Um, I, I like when a man is the lead, honestly, especially if he's leading me correctly. Do you see what I'm saying? If he's a good provider and a good dad and he shows up when he's supposed to, I love it when he takes the lead. That's how it was intended to be. I think we're getting that a little mixed up. Women feel like because they are, well... Uh, in, in a lot of cases, we do make more money than our, um, than, you know, some of our men. A lot of times the men is the, the man is the primary bread, bread winner, but sometimes we do make more money. And if we do, I feel like we hold that over their heads. And I feel like that alone is in a way disrespectful. Um, we should always show a man how valuable they are to us. But but again, I am a woman that I, I don't mind being submissive if my man is leading me correctly. So let me ask you a question. If your man makes less money than you, can you still be submissive to that man? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because where he doesn't make as much money as me, which is not the case, but he's going to be stronger in other areas. Do you see what I'm saying? Like if he if he is a very strong man, that's not going to matter to me because in every area he leads. So to me, that's strength. And I don't see him making less money than me as a weakness because he he is the leader and he is leading me. I, I just I feel like women we put too much emphasis on what he drives, how much money he makes, what kind of house he drive, what, what kind of house he has. Can he pay my bills? You know, a lot of a lot of women are still looking for people to save them. Mm. I mean, a lot of guys uh, that I talk to, they say, "Hey, I've I've not known her for thirty days, and she's already telling me what bill she has. Why?" And you know, I, I was having this conversation with somebody the other day, and uh, oh, how did it go? We were talking, and I said, you know how you can tell a woman is um, about your pockets? First, in the first conversation, they're going to bring up Cash App or Apple Pay. That first conversation, no matter what it is, somehow Cash App going to come into play. And then, is oh, you got Cash App? Is you that got Cash App? And you'd be like, and then stupidly, you might be like, oh, yeah, I got that. Oh, for real? Um, How about you send me like uh 250 you know, because I'm just trying to do this and, this. and then the dude gets so sucked in because when it comes to men and women and dating, men automatically, I don't know about women, but automatically, the only thing and the first thing that we can go off is how physically attractive you are because we don't right. know anything about you. Right. So, if the man is physically attracted to that woman, they will get sucked in. And then next thing you know, like I said, if he's trying to impress her, that money going to go out. But what happens is you create a monster. Got to feed it. Exactly. So if you feed that monster, ain't no push and stop on it. Like, so once that cash app goes, you got to continue to go. And it's going to, the number ain't just going to stay at 250. It's going to go to three. It's going to go to 350. So we're not talking about they're in a relationship for three to six months. Because for me, three to six months is okay if he wants to help her out, right? But day one or week two or the first month, you, mm. can, I think it's inappropriate for her to ask him anything about hair, nails, bills. Now, if he volunteers, that's something totally different. If he says, hey, I wanna do this for you, for me, that's different than her right. saying, I need this, I need this, I need this. I'm also not talking about if they're in a relationship and they've been in a relationship. That's totally different. He's supposed to help her and she's supposed to help him. Or even if he wants to gift her, 
I definitely believe in reciprocation. She should also gift him. And as women, we should really surprise you guys more with flowers and trips and Jordans and or or whatever your thing is. I'm I'm saying or get your car washed and detailed. Those are the kind of things to me that, you know, or or try this. How about after a hard day's work, a massage and I'll rub your feet? How about that? See, we don't do stuff like that anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. I, yeah, I do. But <laughs> what? Yeah. Nah. nah, you know what we get? I'm gonna tell you what men get. And then every man can vouch for. Man's gonna get two things. He gonna might he might get something to eat. He might. Not always. Might. Now with that might. 50% chance that might gonna come with it ain't even home cooked. It's gonna be store bought or restaurant, Uber Dean, Uber Eats, whatever, whatever. And he might, might get the same thing he got for Valentine's Day, same thing he got for Christmas, same thing he got for his birthday. It's the same coochie he got uh uh, uh when she messed up and when he made up. That's what we get. So I have a question for you. Is it important for a woman to be able to cook a homemade meal in this day and age? Is that important? Hold on, repeat that. Is it important for a woman to be able to make a homemade meal for a man? It's not important, no. It's not. Okay. It, it's, it's a plus. It's a bonus. It's not important though. Okay. Cause because this city is the thing with us. We just go off of the effort. You could make us hot dogs and french fries. You can fry us some chicken. You can make us some brats. Like the easiest thing is boiling water. It's the point that you try. We thinking about the thought of you trying. We ain't even thinking about the meal. Now. Nah. The thing is, though, we do like a home cooked meal. So if you try, that means like, okay, well, I call mom or I call granny, got the recipe, I fucked it up, but I tried, and I'm like, yo, baby, you tried, yeah, you fucked up that chicken, but I ain't gonna eat that. But you tried though, and and that's the thing. So we like, man, my baby actually went in the kitchen. No, she can't cook for shit, but she tried though. I love her but, for that. So why did you react when I said after a hard day? you would come home and get a massage and get your feet rubbed. Because we don't get that. Most men, and I could actually say 70% or higher, has never ever had they woman rub their feet. Oh. A massage? Okay. Yeah, we didn't have a massage. But they okay. feet rub? Nah. 70%. And I'm going to say 70%, and I'm being generous with that 70%. So I'm saying 30% out there really doing it, but it's really probably maybe 20, 15, 20. That's probably 10. I say probably 10 to 15. Okay. Being realistic. But do you know how attentive you would have to be to your man to rub his feet? That's that's the kind of thing that I'm saying. We need to start spoiling our men again with and rubbing your man's feet is very a very simple thing. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? It's very intimate also. That's something that money can't buy. And that's something I feel like we need to get back to. We need to get back to intimacy. And notice that I did not say anything about sex. That is very intimate. That's an intimate act. So by the time if that comes later, it's going to be something wonderful. So, A feet rub? So, so my yeah. question is this, though. Who taught that? <laughs> Who taught that was that was that something that just popped in the head or was that taught was that something that was seen like okay mama taught me how i should need to pay attention to my man granny taught me how auntie taught me how miss betty down the street taught me how like whoever was that a talk or was that like mm, i would want him to do this for me so let me do this for him so let me speak personally for me um the act of intimacy comes in several levels, right? And so right. I do like to pamper myself and I like a lot of self-care. So that's what, see a lot of men, you would be surprised at the men who have never had a professional massage. While I do massage my man, I would definitely take him to get a facial, a professional massage. 
Um, she's not going to rub his feet because it's very intimate. But I would definitely have a woman masseuse do it because it's just a very, um, it's an act of self-care. And I think a lot of men, uh, because they work so hard and they provide as they should, I just feel like they should be pampered. Also, we, as women, we go get our nails done. We go get our feet done. We get pedicures, manicures. We get our hair done. Men don't do it like that. And I feel like that's important. He needs to feel valued just like we do. So for me, it's an act of intimacy and I love it. And, and I love to do it. I love to give it. Okay. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to be honest. We love that. We would, <laughs> we would love that. And we would encourage more of that. We would, we would definitely uh, open our arms to like, Oh, what man. And then this is the crazy part. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Dude gonna go back and tell his homeboy, yo man, <laughs> what you did last week? Yo man, this weekend, man, I was at the crib, man, I was bored, man. Baby came over. Okay, well, what happened? Man, dude, remember we did all that overtime last week? Yeah, yeah, I remember all that overtime. Yo man, I was telling her how my ankles was killing me, man. You were standing up on our feet and all that. Man, baby girl, man, got me in the tub, gave me a bath, and then massaged me and then massaged my feet. You bullshit. First thing I think my you bullshit. <laughs> she ain't rub your, your feet. You know what your feet look like, boy? No, but she rubbed my feet. Does not matter. You tell your uncle that, yeah, you gonna marry that girl right there. Like, she, <laughs> boy, ain't she ain't even rub my damn feet. See, and because like I said, 70 to 80% pe- men ain't never experienced it. Ain't it's, never experienced it. It's very important. Um I try to be health conscious and uh, that's why I'm, you know, toward the ATL vegan. And it's also important that you and your man um, try to get in a healthy rhythm because we're, when you're healthy physically and mentally, it's just everything just uh, flows together. Like um, I do this thing where it's called a, a lymph node um, cleanse. And you just get oil and everywhere your lymph nodes are, you massage. I also believe in that for my man because they've never done it. Like, I just believe in pampering my man. And I think um, if I could tell my, my, my sisters anything, I would just tell them to pamper their man a little bit more. Like, men, like you said, men are simple. The effort is what, what matters. And I think for them, if you show them how special they are to you, I think that reciprocate. Mm, and and then that's definitely, definitely true. Um, ladies, I think y'all need to pay attention because, uh, <laughs> man, I, I promise you, if you watch this or you listen to this, uh, and you do this for your man, I don't care what is going on in y'all relationship. Y'all gonna go through a very very happy time at that point. Now, fellas. She can't just be out here rubbing your feet for no reason. I mean, you got to be a man and you got to stand on business. If you, if you bullshitting, <laughs> she ain't going to rub your feet. If you out there fucking around on her, she is not going to rub your feet. If you out there just out there making her look stupid in these streets, Facts. lying to her for no damn reason, and men, we do lie. I'm not even going to sit here and bullshit. We tell the stupidest lies for no reason. Right. So she's not going to rub her feet. Like, so you got to be worthy of the treatment that she is speaking of. Mm-hmm. And, and and it all comes with, with time and dedication. Yes. And it sounds like a woman that that would not turn down the Cheesecake Factory date. I'm, I'm just saying. So I don't <laughs> think this, not. the Cheesecake Factory lady out there rubbing no feet. Uh, I don't see that happening, brother. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not hating on her, but I'm just saying she ain't she ain't doing it. She ain't doing it. But, hey, yo, so we we talked about dating. We talked about mm-hmm. the expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask a question that some men, you know, Valentine's Day is right around the corner, Christmas, okay. whatever. What does a perfect date look like? For me, for Valentine's Day, um, because see, this is a thing. This is a thing. When you're content within, it doesn't take a whole lot for you. So whatever he plans for us, he he pretty much knows me. So he knows that it doesn't take a lot. If he wants to go all out and we 
um, take a trip to um, the mountains to watch the, the leaves turn colors in the fall. That would be perfect for me. I like to do things that are very, very different, things that are memorable. Anybody can take you out to eat. Anybody can buy um, some ice for you or, okay, so maybe everybody can't buy ice for you, but <laughs> to me, that's a lot, right? But you will never forget going to the uh, North Georgia mountains or the Tennessee mountains, watching the leaves change colors in the fall because that's something that happens once a year. Okay. Like you want, you always want to do something that's memorable. As long as I'm with my man and he's good to me, we're going to have a good time and he's going to get his feet rubbed at the end of the night. What? <laughs> yo, I'm just, hey, yo, lucky man. Nah, you go get some leaves and you get your feet, man. Okay. Um, I th- I think uh, from my perspective, a perfect date is laughter, laughter. Oh, that's uh, important. I like I, that. We we can have a fucked up date. We can everything can go wrong, but if we can laugh at the end of it, like we bugging out, crying in tears, like how bad this is. It might be one of them dates where you going back and you tell your grandkids, hey, yeah, I remember the one time, man, we went out to this restaurant and I forgot my damn wallet. We had ordered all this damn food. And next thing you know, they was like, well, I guess y'all can wash these damn dishes. In. Valid, what, valid point. Grandma valid point. was in the kitchen washing with me. Like, it's just stuff like that. But if you can laugh and you can have a good time from it, um, it's just, it's laughter. Like, we can go to a comedy show and the comic is just ripping on us. I love it. Yo, we we bought to have some fun. So definitely um seeing that that woman smile and then knowing I put that woman smile there. Important. Oh, what? Important. Right there. Perfect date, man. So fellas, I'm talking to y'all. Looking in the camera, looking through your eyes. <laughs> Make sure she is smiling. Make sure she is happy. Yeah. You ain't gonna do it all the time. If you can do it some of the time, you win it half that battle right there. All right? Absolutely. All right. So, Troy, I enjoyed our conversation. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely having a conversation with a boss because you pulled the boss car right there with the feet <laughs> thing. I'm not even lying. Um, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, I want to thank you for everything. Uh, this conversation is very much needed, uh, especially and I'm not even going to be racial, but especially in the black community, when we come to Dayton, uh, a lot of us has been misguided. Uh, right. We're guided by the social media lifestyle and everything. And everything right. is uh, virtual reality. Uh, what's the reality stars and all that. We're trying to be the right. Kardashians and, right. and loving hip hop. So right. um, I just want to thank you for your insight and the breath of fresh air that you just breathed into this, this conversation for having me i enjoyed it i want to come back oh you coming back oh, we got a <laughs> lot of topics we gotta uh we gotta get to but but, but first first hold on uh, i want to do this while we doing this i make okay. sure i got my man's his name right there's um we should have did this earlier but there's a guy he's a food critic his name i believe his name is keith lee yes and he's been In ATL recently, and yeah, you're in the ATL, so you. I am. Into famous restaurants. Yes. He's said, "I ain't gonna say no nice things," because he's actually been very, very polite in his, his, uh, his reporting, and and it ain't been good. Mm-mm. Is the ATL restaurants really like how he said? Like, he, it's hard to actually get good service at these restaurants. So, Cuddy, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been to the Old Lady Gang, and the service was superb. Okay. Um, but, I, but I'd also like to say that the day that I went, Candy was there, and I think uh, one of the aunts were there. So maybe that has something to do with it. But the okay. food was good, and the service was good. I'll also have to be honest and say I do not DoorDash, and I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. I like to go to my restaurants and personally get my own thing. So... Um, he named a couple of other restaurants. Do I believe him? Absolutely. Um, we, we sometimes get a little um, complacent when we're with, in the public. And uh, we, we have to make sure that these standards of customer service and quality 
are still in these restaurants because that's how we make our money. I'll tell you, um, anytime I go to the Slutty Vegan, which is uh, owned by Pinky Cole, I'm pretty sure you've heard of it, right? right? Yeah. Every time I go, you walk in the door, you're greeted. Just the level of customer service is always top tier. And I love it there. Whenever I can go to Slutty Vegan, I always do. Not because the food is just so good, but it's just because of the customer service too. So I definitely believe he had those experiences. Um, I, I just feel like most of the restaurants were black owned. And I think we just need to um, step our game up a bit more. So I saw the video. I, I did. And I was saying to myself, I can definitely believe it. I'm not going to say a lot of them because I go to a lot of black owned restaurants. In fact, I try to support them primarily. So right. most of the ones that I go to, they are top tier because guess what? When I spend my money, I'm going to get co good customer service or I will be out. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Now, I just had to ask because I, I like to give people that actually go in these restaurants because right. sometimes everything might be one sided. So right. I like to to get another person's viewpoint. Um, and I was just asking myself, like, are these restaurants the new clubs? Like, a lot of you see a lot of people go out of town just to go to certain restaurants because right. they seen it on this show or they seen right. it on this review or this that right. in person. Right. And and when you go to ATL, I'm be honest, you you trying to see some of those stars, so some of those people that might be on Love and Hip Hop or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. might be on the Housewives or whatever the case may be. You might bump into anybody. So is they the new club, I guess, is what we are asking. I think so. If you definitely go to a Hawks game, it's the new club. If you go mm -hmm. to a Falcons game, it's a new club. Atlanta is just the mecca of celebs. Uh, I was at the movies and I saw, uh, I think, three stars from uh, Love and Hip Hop. You just bump into them anywhere. They can be at Lennox. They can be wherever. So I think you're right. A lot of people come to Atlanta and um, it's just it's just so um, ethnic. And, and a lot of people come to Atlanta and say, this place is not real. And Conda is not. It's definitely um, a facade of what Atlanta used to be. Do I still love my city? Absolutely, because I'm going to still try to be um, as solid and try to keep it as uh, authentic as I possibly can. But there's a new generation and you know people see things differently um you come to atlanta you're gonna you, it's a smoke screen that's what i'll say you, you yeah. kind of have to you know you, you kind of have to sit back and let the smoke clear and then you'll be able to see but it, it you know it, it is it is what it is i gotta i gotta be real about it okay okay well i had to i had to get your uh, opinion i had to find out if this was actually what it was supposed to be or yep. if it was something that he made up or it was something just like it was just a bad experience that one day but um hey I, when i come to atlanta it's a it's a bunch of restaurants i'm trying to hit <laughs> i hey i don't care if they they celebs there or not i just want the food i want to see what i'm looking for when That's you all. come just give me a little notice. That's all I'm saying. Like I told Tina, you got to give me a little notice and I'll be ready for you. Yo, yo, you you know I'm coming and I'm going to let you know. Hey, drop me off with a, a bottle of Pepto-Bismol. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to try to hurt myself up in there. That's all I'm trying. All right. I'm coming to Detroit too. Oh, yo, yo, I got a couple places up here. Hey, same thing. I got some vegan spots too. Don't oh, worry. Okay, okay. You know, because you know I'm vegan, right? I know. Hey, don't worry. Hey, had some vegan food the other day. It was delicious. Okay. It was delicious. I didn't even know it was vegan food. I was like, man, okay. this, is some fake, this is fake chicken. This is good fake chicken. Is... <laughs> I could not tell the difference. I'm not even playing. Yeah, I'll be ready for you when you come to the A. All right. So I just want to thank you, man, for coming on. I really do appreciate you. Hey, my everybody, pleasure. My pleasure. Yo, give Toy the ATL Vegan a round of applause. And, and and show us some love and she will be back for show on Conversation with a Boss. It's Definitely. your boy B. Cuddy. Uh any last words? Um I just say I just want to say that uh we are kings and we are queens and we just need to treat each other as such. And uh the respect goes a very long way. And it's all love. I just want to tell everybody to live in love and light. Okay, and y'all know me, hey. The month, the most. Oh, you see him. All right, I'm out of here. It's your boy B. Cuddy and Toy the ATL Vegan.
Conversations with a boss is signing out. Peace. All right, peace. They see me out and be like, but don't talk at all. That's really not the truth, I just don't fuck with y'all. I'm only with a few, and yeah, my circle's small. Or either by my damn Ruger in my drawers. Ain't trying to be no tough guy, it's just time race. The softest niggas gangsta.